Hey, so I'm Iglesias and we're inside Woodland Studio and I'm joined by Paul from Emerging. Um, I recently picked up some Vocal Trio 11s um, and to accompany that, I demoed the Trinov ST2 Pro. Um, so I brought down Paul to kind of give a really good explanation of why I've got it in the studio, why it's so good. Um, the differences between that having no sort of room treatment um, and Sonarworks, basically the budget sort of version of it. Um, so, yeah. So, Paul, if you want to explain a bit about yourself and how you came about the Trinov unit. Okay, yeah, sure. Um, so, my background, I was a recording engineer for many years back in the 80s and 90s and then um, got involved in a lot of equipment manufacturing companies. I came across Trinov um, about 10 years ago. So, Emerging are the UK distributor for Trinov. Um, I met one of the chaps at Trinov in the very early days when they were a very small team of about half a dozen people. Um, and I had never heard of room correction before at that point. Um, in fact, I don't even think Sonoworks as a product was around then. Mm. Um, Trinov was really quite unique. And uh, I got the opportunity to hear it when um, I went to a, an existing customer of ours and a nice studio. We set it up and I was just blown away. As a mix engineer, I was just absolutely stunned at the difference between correction and non-correction and then wanted to know more. Yeah. Learned a lot from uh, <clears throat> the guys at Trinov about room acoustics and everything. And that's really how we kind of, it was a personal passion of mine, really, um, as, as an engineer, because I could hear the future. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then as time has kind of gone on over that 10 years, I think when I first got involved with Trinov, um, there was a lot of resistance by a lot of people that room correction was the devil. Um, they didn't really understand it. You know, people's mindsets were different. And interestingly, um, you know, obviously you've tried Sonoworks. Sonoworks as a product is a great introduction to yeah. room correction. Um, the big question I always get from people is, well, what's the difference between Sonoworks and Trinoff? Because there's a massive price difference. Yeah. Um, the key thing is really that obviously the Trinoff itself is a dedicated piece of hardware. So it's doing all the processing outside of your door. Um, it doesn't need to be committed to your um, your mix bus. It's not in any way involved in your workstation. It is part of your monitoring system yeah. and is in your monitor path. So it's a set and forget, really, once you've got it set up. Mm. Um, but the, the, the really key difference with Trinov and, and any other optimization system is that it's doing more than just frequency. It's more than just amplitude. Um, which is it's, mainly what... It's doing Sony phase and timing, which is the most important part yeah. about getting your... Um, monitoring correct, as well as your amplitude. Everybody's got peaks and troughs, which we can go into in a bit more detail, but the fundamental difference is about phase and timing Yeah. and uh, what known as group delays. It's, it's the effect of what happens immediately after it comes out of your speakers, clatters around your room, and that's that's what it deals with okay. in, in a much more uh, detailed way. So you came down here today. Um, what's your sort of experience of what this room sounds like without Trinov and everything to begin with? Okay, so um, I think my first experience really is typically it's the low end, uh, the problems that you're having in terms of the base. Because of the, the dimensions of the room, it's a nice size space, but it's not unusual. Most people's spaces tend to be this sort of size. Yeah. The challenges of that are um, on the low end. The biggest Acoustically, the biggest thing to deal with is everything below 200 hertz. Mm -hmm. It's actually relatively easy to deal with high, mid and high frequencies. Yeah. You know, the kind of the panels that you've got in here are um, absorbing and diffusing um, the high frequencies. But below 200 is much, much more challenging because traditionally, acoustic treatment, the only you need to put bass trapping in that is then absorbing the low frequencies and stopping them from bouncing back into the center of the room. Yeah. And that can only be done by um, generally depth and size. And the biggest problem is to build correct base trapping in the corners needs to be very deep. Two, even three meters deep would be Which the idea. Which mine aren't. Which they aren't. <laughs> and, and most people's aren't in the modern day world now, um, simply because of space. If you if you had a 10 meter by 15 meter room, you'd have a lot more space. Yeah. And, and it's a lot of expense as well, mm. you know, to do that properly and to really build those base traps it's going to cost you a good few thousand pounds. Plus, you've actually got to really get somebody to properly measure it and calculate 
exactly what depth, what materials, and so on. Yeah. Um, so it's quite challenging for people now to be able to do that on a budget. Um, Trinov is a key part of that, but it has to be done in conjunction with existing acoustic treatment. So it's, yeah. it's the combination of the two that's important. You can never make uh, a, an untreated room sound perfect sound by any means. No. There's no magic box that's going to just do that. The Trinov does an amazing job, but it has to be done with acoustic treatment mm -hmm. as well to get the best out of it. Even same with like Sonar Works and stuff like that. Yeah, still, any, any, any DSP system on its own is not the panacea that's going to fix everything. Yeah. You do still need to treat things, but most importantly, deal with the bottom end first, then look at the top end later. Mm -hmm. The biggest mistake a lot of people make is to buy a lot of panels and deal with the top end. And all it does is make it, it just makes it very dead. Yeah. And it still doesn't address the, the elephant in the room, which is everything below 200. Mm -hmm. So the most common things that I see every day, and exactly what you've got with your room, if we look at the graph, is that you've got the top graph of the before, you can see in terms of the frequency, you've got a big bump at 40 hertz, which is what, 9.5 dB. Yeah. Uh, and then you've got a big dip at uh, 70, 80. Yeah. And those two things correlate together exactly so what's happening there is that that measurement has been made at the mix position but in other parts of the room that bump will get even bigger that when you go closer to the walls closer to the corners the low frequency is energy that's trying to get out of the room and okay. it can't so it just hangs in the corners and then the effect is that it then that's happening on all four corners and the ceiling and the floor and then it effectively you can't escape so it then bounces back and then that's what creates the null point at 70 so yeah. it's the anti-phase crossing over each other those. yeah so they're basically cancelling each other out but at a higher frequency so okay. it's sort of it goes in uh, octaves yeah um, so if you mathematically and, did it would it kind of make sense of, yeah yeah uh, yeah you could sit yeah. and work out that on a on a spreadsheet and you could work out that you were going to have a dip at 70 right okay yeah because you've measured the full dimensions of the room and then you've looked at done some measurements and so on so yeah um that that is the same in every single room i've ever been in yeah uh, it's acoustics you can't defy the law of physics yeah and most people probably have problems at, on those low ends. yes yeah. always uh i mean most people um the dip at the null point is always somewhere between around 70 up to about 110 hertz yeah which for most people doing dance music falls on the floor stuff it's always the front of the bass drum yeah and the whole bottom end and everybody's lacking punch and everybody's lacking the um, the kind of energy that you want for club mixing mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And that's where the problems lie. So that's what you need to deal with. And that's done in two ways. It's done, the Trinov um, does an, an incredible job at correcting it, but also putting the correct bass trapping and actually dealing with the low end is going to mean that the Trinov doesn't have to work quite as hard in terms of the frequency. Yeah. But... But there's another dimension to all of this that Sonoworks doesn't uh, doesn't offer you, which is phase and yeah. timing. Um, and in simple terms, something like that was kind of your stereo image, and, and it's a, it's a combination of stereo image, but it's also um, it's what causes the sort of muddiness and the lack of depth okay. in what you're hearing. So in any room, when you have equipment, screens, the desk, and the acoustics, everything is causing that imaging and the depth to be blurred. Yeah. So anyway, I can describe it. Yeah. And smeary. You smeary. Mm. And you, so you don't have a very defined center. You've got a real mush around the sort of two to 500 hertz area. But you as a mix engineer are, you are naturally trying to make more clarity to that area. Yeah. And actually your track is probably not that mushy, mm. but what you're hearing is, so you think that that's what you're doing. So yeah. The important element to any it ends up being like over EQ'd or over boosted, yeah. undercut. Like you need to deal with, you need to set the palette that you're working with to be correct, so that you trust the changes and the things that you're you're doing. Yeah, that's why it's important to get you know the best speakers that you can afford that are delivering the detail, but also make sure that the room acoustics and adding a Trinov is all the stages to getting a perfectly flat and accurate result yeah. so that your mix decisions, your EQing, even when you're getting sounds together. You know, I, I, I see a lot of people even just choosing a particular kick drum. Um, if you've got a lot of low-frequency reverberation in the room, which is what the, the low-frequency problems are, 
um, you actually think you've got a kick drum with a much longer release on mm. it, but actually it's your room that's going, yeah. mm, and not the kick drum. And that was a big problem that I had when yeah. I was writing. I was All of my choices for kick drums were completely, well, they were kind of wrong for what yeah. the track needed because yeah, yeah. my room was saying that that was the right that's thing right. to use. So you, but... were, you were picking really short kick drums because you kept thinking that everything had some mm on yeah. it. And actually it didn't. It was the room going, mm, the yeah. kick drum was going, fucked. And that was it. You know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and this is a common thing that I say. So, you know, <clears throat> products like the Trinov really address that. But it's the phase correction that is most important because once you unclutter all of that low frequency content and just the imaging generally, and most importantly, the depth, you hear when everything is hitting you at the same time in terms of full frequency, um, then you get much wider imaging, you get much better depth, you can easily balance stuff. It all just falls into place. Yeah. You're not fighting against the monitoring or the, the sound that you're actually hearing in the room. Mm. And ultimately that then allows it to translate much better when you hear it out of the room. Yeah. You start, you need, you know, this combination of acoustics and a Trinov gets a, an accurate, um, space that you trust. That's the important thing about trusting. Yeah. And um, I can't emphasize enough how important it is to get that right first before you start buying more toys. Yeah, yeah, so true. Shiny boxes don't make better records. Yeah. <laughs> it is true. If I could, honestly, we, I mean, I'll send this to you before off camera, a sound card, turn off, speakers, treated room, I would sell the rest of the stuff in here yep. just to have those three things if that's what yep. budget restricted me on. Um, it's just the fact that I'm quite late to learning about the Trinov. Like. It's, never, it's never too late. I mean, I can't, I can't remember the last time that any of our Trinov customers haven't said to me, I wish I'd bought this three years ago. Yeah. It's probably the best, most important piece of equipment I've ever bought in my studio. It is, yeah. You know, decent pair of speakers, Trinov, acoustics, as you say. Mm. That is the way forward. That's how you should start. Yeah. Then you buy the shiny toys, the extra things that um, now that you can hear it properly, now it's time to Definitely. start playing with some other things. Definitely. So I think one of the things we would like to do is to try and explain to you the process of calibration because this is where the Trinov is really quite unique and there's some unique parts to it. So I think number one thing is to first look at the microphones. So the Trinov microphone, which comes with the, the system, is very unique. And you can see there are four Omni capsules that are designed in a pyramid shape. So you've got a triangulation this way and a triangulation that way. Now the point of this is you can think about uh, a GPS system. To get any positioning of where you are, say your phone, it needs to be able to see at least three or more satellites. Once you have that triangulation, then you can calculate much more accurate positioning where you are. The microphone is exactly the same as that. So what we're trying to do is we want to know the distance, the height, and the horizontal position of each loudspeaker, whether that be a stereo pair, a 5.1, 7.1, or even a Dolby Atmos. It doesn't matter where the speakers are, the Trinov can locate them simply because of this triangulation. Now, the big advantage of this, if we compare this to uh, the microphone that's used for, say, a Sonoworks system, this is a mono microphone, so this is literally one of those capsules. So because there is only a single microphone, um, the only way that you're ever going to be able to work out different positioning is to take multiple points. As I'm sure many of you out there know uh, and have used uh, a Sonoworks system if you have, you just have to keep taking more and more and more positions. It's a painful process. It's a very painful process. <laughs> um, and, and really not necessarily completely accurate either. It's pretty random where you're taking those positions, where with the with the Trinov system, you put the microphone where your head is. That is your head. There is a very definitive front and back to this microphone. And by positioning that in the monitoring position where you sit, it is then accurately able to know the exact distance of every speaker and most importantly, the position of them. And then the very most, very important thing is the phase coherency is it's correctly measuring the full frequency phase coherency of every individual speaker to the listening position. That, that is the unique um, feature that really sets it apart why it has to have its own processing and so on. Um, but that's the tool. Okay, so uh, in terms of the calibration process, just to put you, take you through the, the Trinov process, obviously with the microphone set up, 
Um, the Trinov generates its own tones. It's using a, a noise that's known as MLS noise. Um, M- MLS is, uh, you can actually Google this. It's in um, uh, Wikipedia. It'll explain what MLS is. But it's it's white noise, but with a randomizer built behind it. So often when you're calibrating, you can hear what sounds like white noise, but actually there's a, a, a background noise that's kind of going... Mm. Um, that's how it deals with the, the phase side of things as well as the amplitude, which is the primary white noise, which is what you measure um, you know, with any room measurement software, um, typically with either be a swept tone or white noise. Yeah. So just to give you a, a little example, I'm just going to set the Trinov off calibrating. So this is the MLS noise. I think mean, certainly in terms of, for the listener, the viewer watching it, it just sounds like white noise. So it will do three bursts on each speaker. And then it moves on to the next speaker and so on. It's just that. And that that is it. I mean, the process of getting the mic in the right position and everything is quite important. So you may do a number of measurements just simply to find the perfect center. Yeah. So if we look over at the screen now, we can look at our calibration. Let me just load back the one that we had. And we can look at, uh, at Joe's room here. So this then, once it's as soon as it's measured, you can now see that it knows the exact position of the speakers in relationship to the microphone in the center. So we can see that the speakers are just slightly wider than 30 degrees. 30 degrees is the the kind of theoretical optimum position for a stereo speaker set. We can then look at the elevation, which is the front on. We can see they're both pretty much the same height. Mine's the blue one, isn't it? So the the blue one, the turquoise is your actual speakers, and then the green one is your sort of theoretical perfect speaker. And then here we have a numerical summary, so we can see that the Trinov has calculated that the left speaker is 1 meter 28 centimeters away and the right speaker is 129. So a very slight difference in the speaker set. doesn't matter because the Trinov is going to accommodate that both in volume and in timing. Um, we can see the elevation. The azimuth is very important. This is the angle of the microphone. So that microphone has a front to it and it's that angle. So it's very important because that would be like turning your head. So if you can imagine if I was sitting here and I didn't have the mic in the right place and I turn my head, all the speakers are now over yeah. there to my stereo listening. So it's important to spend actually, the time to just get it in the I right place. I think that's place. the mistake that I was making at the beginning when I spoke to you first yeah. was that I would listen to it and it would... It would the image was, was actually center, but it was shifting, shifting slightly. shifted off yeah. the side. So the Trinov was correcting the imaging, but probably because you had the mic and slightly was, swept. Yeah. So it was then you were hearing the result of that. So, Yeah. This will basically give you a summary of the exact volume that you were monitoring at. We can see that the uh, it was 101.9 dB SPL C weighted and so on. So then the Trinov is then, the, the lower section is all of the correction. So it is, you can see the difference in the, the delay that's been applied to accommodate the speaker that's further away and the speaker that's closer. Um, the volume delay compensation, so you can see that it's delayed the left speaker by point two of a millisecond to accommodate for the fact that the right speaker was one centimeter further away so that it ends up with everything in the right timing um you can see the frequency response of the speakers themselves so slightly different on each side so then the the trinov interprets that so with the algorithms it's then correcting four things so it's it's doing the overall volume of each speaker the delay the position of each speaker then it deals with the amplitude which it does by looking first at the amplitude direct so immediately that the beginning of that mls noise burst comes out and then the and then the point that it stops the trinov knows exactly the length of that mls noise so it then can calculate when that sound stops the time taken to actually go to the microphone so that's physical speed of sound plus any processing that's going on in the speaker yeah. itself oh my so God. it then calculates that so that's how it works out the distance of each speaker from the microphone and then most importantly, it then measures the direct sound and the first reflection. So if we look at the graph here, the amplitude direct, this is showing me the top graph is the before and the bottom graph is the after uh, with the correction. It is showing me the actual sound directly as it comes out the speaker. So the most obvious thing that you can see there is the 70 hertz dip, yeah. 80 hertz dip, 75, 80 hertz. So that is happening immediately that it comes out of the speaker. Um, so whatever's right. happening in terms of the room acoustics, that's there right from the beginning. It's not something that's happening later. Okay. If we compare that to the amplitude, which is now 
that direct sound plus everything that happens after that point, so for like the next five milliseconds or so, mm -hmm. then you can see, if you look at the top graph, you can see the influence of the room after that point. You yeah. can see where the, the 40 hertz really starts to build up in the room. So that 40 hertz wasn't a problem immediately that it came out the speaker. Okay. And then it gets ampli amplified by the room and Got the standing you. waves that we were talking about so earlier. So those parts around 1K, 4-ish. Uh, yeah. So a, cer a certain amount of that can be the tonality of the speaker itself. The the sort of 2 to 5K, 6K can be a little bit of a dip is very much part of the design of the speaker in okay. some respects. It's the kind of the smile just makes it sound slightly smoother. Got you. Um, but yeah, every, every speaker has different characteristics. Um, so then the other very important element of this, which is the thing that is unique to Trinov, is the phase. So... Although it has got the overall speaker timing correct, in theory, everything should then arrive at you. But everything that's in the way here and all of the effect of the room is meaning that certain frequencies are hitting you at different times, which mm -hmm. is what you don't want. And that is what causes phase problems. Now, phase can be anything from 10 degrees, 20 degrees. So very minimal amounts. We're not talking about the phase button and a sort of 180 degree yeah. inverted phase. We are talking about 10 degrees rather than 180, but only between, say, 5 kilohertz and 10 kilohertz. Yeah. So the Trinov has a um, the ability using IRR and FIR filters, which are linear and nonlinear filters, and it, it chooses which filters it uses for the top end and which ones it uses for the bottom end. It is using those filters to not only correct the amplitude, the frequency, but it's also using those filters to change the timing but only in certain frequency bands, which yeah. is what's known as group delay. But that's something Sonar works physically and that, that cannot, do. cannot do. No. Cannot do. Because it cannot, um, it can't be spatially aware, it can't be position aware, so how can it ever get everything perfectly in yeah. place? Um, so although it's doing it for each speaker rather than it thinking, it's not thinking about it as a stereo pair. If you get that speaker perfectly in phase at all frequencies and you get that speaker in phase at all frequencies, then what a surprise, they are now in phase with each other. Yeah. The result of correcting that phase, as we can see on the phase graph, the top graph is the before. So we can, we can see that very significantly the two lines are separating. When they're separating, that's actually those frequencies starting to go out of phase by an amount of degrees, as you can yeah. see on the side there. But you've also got the phase turn. So each one of those drivers, these are a three-way speaker, you will have a phase turn that's just an a inevitable um, part often in many speaker designs that just as you at the crossover point there's always a phase turn okay which in itself is not a bad thing it doesn't you don't suddenly hear them out of phase but the correction in the speaker but it's always better to try and reduce those phase turns so you can see that the resulting lower graph has got rid of a couple of these phase turns so everything from again. like 100 and below where you where you do have up down up down yeah, yeah. is that normal to have some or would you, uh, you, ideally, I, would you want that flat I, in, in in a well treated room and maybe with the right monitoring system i've had them where it's been a perfect line Completely, yeah. okay yeah, okay with no face sense at all uh but that's not a wrong thing in itself it's just trying to deal with as many as it can so the result is that in a stereo environment certain frequencies going out of phase ultimately it all just becomes a mono mush the first thing that everybody notices when you put a trinov in and out is the imaging just shifting yeah. massive stereo image from what you actually once you hear it correctly in phase and suddenly everything seems to just fall into place you actually think your old monitoring system was in mono i've had people yeah. actually look at their their monitor controller and check the mono buttons not in. yeah like, wow, i've never heard it sound so mono before yeah it's like that's your monitoring system mm. as it stands that's what I've you've just heard it now at the push of one button perfectly in phase yeah and then you get an absolutely perfectly defined center and all the mush goes out even if you don't do anything with the amplitude just sorting out that stereo image gives you the depth you start to hear reverb tails um half a second longer yeah. just the detail everything suddenly falls into place and it all just now sounds like it's coming from the speaker system and not from everywhere else, everywhere else you just yeah. suddenly hear it all shifts to the, the front big difference i found was that two to 20k bit you know listen to vocals yeah it would be like there yeah. initially. And now when I'm, it's here. Yeah. It's tight, it goes like... from kind of a vocal being, you know, right in the middle of two speakers to absolute laser yeah. sharp 
focal in the middle. And that's what I, I think middle. what I was having before was some stuff in the middle, kind of around about there. Some stuff super wide because mm. when you're panning as well, I couldn't hear two, three, four yeah. degrees on. I would, own, you know, by the time it got to 30, I'd be like, okay, cool. That's right. That's and what you, it sounds like so a two. It's, it's or, like nothing, nothing, nothing jump. Yeah. So I would have a lot of stuff in the middle, stuff really, really wide, yeah. Yeah. and nothing in that sort of gap on the side. And then as you add more speakers to a system, if you're working in surround or immersive, that problem just exaggerates itself yeah. even further. So once you start panning down the side between the front and the rear, that all becomes a very undefined area as well. Yeah. Again, all of that gets completely addressed with, with the Trinal system. And it's just incredible. You can just suddenly do a pan all the way around and yeah, the sound yeah. doesn't change. And it, somebody described it as like getting a laser pen and just shining it around the room. Yeah, You can say exactly where that sound is. But also, most importantly, even in a, in a stereo environment, once you address that phase, the other thing that people always remark on is that all of their plugins suddenly seem like they're working better. Yeah. Everything you do, you can suddenly hear a quarter of a dB change on an yeah. EQ, where before you were having to wind it around to 4 I dB before definitely. you were even hearing anything. Mm. So you just uh, it Much reinvents smaller changes. because you're now actually properly ma- being able to zone in on your on your sound because it's uncluttered. Yeah. That's, that's what you're trying to do. And I would spend your sound. hours and hours EQing or compressing or, or whatever and actually realizing that I'm massively overdoing everything <clears throat> to be able to hear those changes. Now I'm actually doing far less to my work because you can hear the small changes and yeah. you know shaping different things you can hear that actually happen now that's the biggest and thing. it's ultimately probably enabling you to just do everything much quicker much it? quicker yeah. yeah much quicker um all the decision making is you, you can hear what you're trying to achieve straight away yeah without having to second guess about you know how wide is my vocal or the backing vocals or how far pushback am i whatever, Tom's or whatever, um, you know exactly what you're trying to achieve straight away. Yeah. That's the biggest thing. And do you now find yourself monitoring quieter? you able to <clears throat> Definitely. I hear mean, the detail on a much lower level. I had the twins in here before, um, and I was having to blast them, and now you know I can listen to Dead Dead Quiet and understand everything all in one go. Yeah. I mean, this is a, this is a common theme, um, and it is simply that your brain wants to hear more detail so the natural thing is to make it louder yeah. and you think that that's how you hear the detail particularly on the bottom end you hear a lot of people say the only way i can really check my bass is to crank it up mm. but actually once you correct it all um you'll find that you're hearing I'm listening exactly to the same bass volume the kick drum the bass relationship even at a very very low level yeah that is the biggest there's thing there's nothing wrong with the speakers at all it was just the, what the way you were hearing it So, to uh, conclude, Joe, I think we can now explain that your room is now perfect from 30 hertz to 20 kilohertz with a deviation of only uh, less than 1 dB. Um, which is incredible. As you can see, which is incredible. You're pretty much phase perfect. Those two lines do not separate. So, overall, you've got a fantastic and accurate sounding monitoring system. Mm. And the benefits of people basically sending over tracks for me to mix, tracks for me to master. What is that main benefit that people are going to get out of me being able to, you know, people who don't quite understand all of this? So um, the, the simple answer is that you are hearing it exactly as it is. There's no influence of any of your, uh, of your speaker or your room that is influencing the decision you're making. So mm-hmm. it's all actually down to you. You're the only person with your tools that can uh, make it any mistakes. There's no... There's no misinterpretation of what you're hearing. What yeah. you're hearing, if if the client hears it differently, it's now they're monitoring what they're listening to oh, on. Yeah. That's the problem. And it will help, obviously, being able to translate this onto car set stereo systems and Completely. Yeah. radio. I mean, and... the, the big acid test with a, with any Trinov optimized room is putting a pair of headphones on and realizing that actually it now sounds exactly the same. Yeah. Because the headphones don't have an influence of a room. Of course, mm-hmm. they have their own characteristics yeah. in top, mid, and bottom, but that's the design of the headphone. But fundamentally, you'll find that putting your headphones on, taking them off, and hearing it in the room sounds it exactly the same. should be quite equal the way yeah, that you... Yeah, yeah. Your overall tonal balance will be the same. There'll be no surprises, no sticking out vocals or flabby bass drums. If it sounds flabby there, it's going to sound flabby there. Yeah. So, yeah, the translation to the car, perfect. Because the, the, the reason why everybody loves cars is because there's no 
significant acoustic effect in a car. It's a very contained space. Yeah. Is why people love listening in cars because it's actually quite an accurate space. To, mm-hmm. And that's what effective what you've created, but in a nicer, larger environment. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, thanks for coming down. I'm Pleasure. explaining all this. Um, if they want to buy one, pick one up. Who can they go to? They can come to emerginguk.com and give me a call. Um, yeah, do you let people demo them and so test we do. Them out yes, and... we uh, we send them out to clients to actually try in their own rooms. In your own space is the only place you're going to hear yeah. what these can do. Uh, there are a number of other UK dealers that also uh, represent us and represent Trinov. So yeah, so yeah, you just got to you've got to listen to it. Um, it's all well um, us basically talking about it, but yeah, you you have to hear it in it your own space. But it's uh, blown we've my never, mind. We've never had a disappointed Trinov customer, yeah. and we have hundreds <laughs> and hundreds of people using it. And it's not just for stereo either. Um, there is a range of products in the in the pro range. Anything from the ST2, which will allow you to do up to two speaker stereo pairs or two tops and up to two subs. Mm-hmm. Um, you go up to the MC8, where you can then have up to four pairs of speakers. We've got the Demon 6 and Demon 12, which also has an integrated monitor controller. There's a desktop remote called La Remote, so you can do all of your monitor source selection, speaker selection from the desktop remote with a big volume knob, dim yeah. and mute and so on. Um, and then there's a range of uh, large speaker array formats that go from 24 up to 64 speakers. So wow. if you decide to build a, an immersive 36 speaker array. Yep. I'm the man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, wicked. Nice one.